Well, thank you, everyone. My name is Israel Silva, and presenting with me is my lovely wife, Monica. And we're in a series called "Own Your Dream Home." Amen. Are you ready to own your dream home? Yes. Great, because to have that dream home, you have to do what? Pay it off. <laughs> Some people might say win the lottery, but you actually have to pay it off, and that's what we're talking about today. Today's class is called the Dream Home Payoff. Pay it off. And this is, I, I think, to me, the most important class out of all the classes that we've taught, or of any class that you ever hear on purchasing a home. Really, there needs to be a section on paying off the home. Because guess what? No matter how many years you've been paying on the mortgage, if you miss three payments, they come and take it. So it's never ours until we pay it, pay it off. off. We always like to start with a theme scripture. So we have a theme scripture. We want to ask you to read it with us on three. One, two, three. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule, saying, "This person began to build and wasn't able to finish." Luke fourteen twenty eight through thirty, the NIV. And that's not us. We're not the ones who build and are not able to finish. We're the ones who come to this class and finish strong. That's why it's so important for us to be able to have the mindset, have the strategy, have the budget to be able to pay it off. Exactly. If you replace build a tower with build your home, it says suppose you want to build your home. Aren't you going to first sit down and count the costs to build your home? Because if you start building it and you run out of money, it is—it's embarrassing, and you feel foolish because you didn't take what the Bible says the time and use wisdom to build your home. And so, this has been a, a theme for our entire series: to own your dream home, you've got to figure out how much it costs to have that home. And one of the things that we're doing in this class is we're focusing on the payoff in this class. There's four main points that we want you to, to think about: the payoff mindset, the payoff strategy, the payoff budget, and stay the course. So these are four points. As、so、everybody get your notebooks out and your pens and pencils, we're going to dive right into this and、oh, start take with take pictures of the slides. Yeah. Take pictures of Israel and I. Cheese. You can start with a payoff mindset. Now, one of the things to take into consideration with the payoff mindset is that we need to be able to have that focus. The focus that this mortgage doesn't need to be thirty years. I mean, that's normal. It doesn't need to be fifteen years. I mean, that's typically good. It can actually be a lot less. In the scriptures, it would show. It would let us know that after seven years, they would pay off their debts. After seven years, they would pay off their debts. They were not in debt for thirty years. They were not in debt for fifteen years. Typically, it was about seven. But guess what? The Word of God says in Psalms twenty-four that the earth is His and He owns everything in it. And if our houses are God's houses, is God interested in a thirty-year mortgage? Nope. He's not even interested in a fifteen-year mortgage, and and you're not even seven, because God wants to do something miraculously. He wants to show up and show off. When we,、uh, our retirement property came up for sale, I mentioned it to Israel. This would be a great property for us to purchase and retire on. And after much prayer and after much consideration, we did. We purchased our retirement property. Well, can, most, I, can I get some more detail on that? Because, yeah, well, okay, <laughs> I, I like to have this great vision. I like have these big ideas, and, and I'm the visionary, and Monica's the detail person, and actually the Take action type person, so we were actually building a house in the process of building a house, and it's on one lot. It's one lot on house, and then three lots came available all next to each other. And this is in the city, and it's really hard to get three lots together. And I remember telling Monica that would be great if we had more money. You could easily buy that, and you could just turn around and flip it in five years because this whole area is being developed, and the next ten years there's going to be ten times as much houses around here. And she's like, "Really?"、And、I'm like, "Yeah, well, just." Maybe it's not the right time, and Monica's like, "Why not? We can do this." And、uh, that's where you know it's having faith, because that that comes down. One of the things in having your dream home is to have the faith that you can do it. Because the, the home we bought, we're building, was our first home, and it was a bit smaller, and but still, we we wanted to have another one. And you have to start planning your 
your, your next home, your dream home. Because a lot of times, how many people, do, how many houses do we have in our life most of the time? We, on the average, the average person has three houses. The first house is typically your starter home. Then typically, most people outgrow that house. And ultimately, once they've outgrown that house, later on when they retire, they should downsize. Because a lot of times, the house is one of the things that eats up your retirement. So three homes is typically the, uh, the, for the average person. So we saw these three lots, and they put them on sale on Thursday. And we, we made an offer on Monday, and they said, oh, it's been sold. They already, somebody already, well, it's not been sold. Someone already made an offer for like 20% more than the asking price. And we're like, we couldn't even afford the asking price, but okay, well, do you still want to put an offer? I'm like, well, well sure, we want to put an offer, but they, they already had it. So then the next day, the guy called back and said, you know what? That developer, they had another thing that came across, and uh, the uh, seller is deciding not to sell it, but since you already had inquired about it, we'll give you an opportunity. So we were able to put in an offer, and we were able to purchase our retirement home. And like I said, you know, 30 years to pay it off, that would have been, I apologize, we were able to purchase our retirement property. 30-year mortgage, that would have been average. 15 years, yeah, that would have been good. But we believe, we're, we're radical Christians, we believe what the Word of God says, seven years or less. Well, by God's grace and doing the steps that we're going to share with you today, we're scheduled to pay it off in four years. And that's what God wants to do for us when it comes to the payoff. He doesn't want 30-year mortgages on his properties. He doesn't want 15 years. He wants a lot less. So what, what Monica's saying is, is you know, we're, there are three lots. We're not three, it's not a house. But we're, we're, we have to do things in steps. And, and we're, we're just using our life as an example that everything we do, if we plan it and we, we stay steady and you set some long-term goals, because it's a long-term goal. First, we have to buy the property. Then we have to pay off the property. Then we have to build the house. And then we have to pay off the house. These are some steps that it takes long-term setting long-term goals and going after them. And typically one of the things is that if we don't consider how soon can we pay off the house, what we're doing is we're actually delaying our retirement because that's what the house does. The house mortgage eats up a lot of our retirement that we could be using that money and be investing it so that we can retire early. The average person is now working to age 67 or 68 just because they still have a mortgage payment. That is the number one thing they holds people back from retiring is having a mortgage payment. So it's important to be able to have that long-term goal and also to be able to avoid any unnecessary risk. A lot of times when people have been living in their house for a couple of years and they have some home equity, they're like, well, I have all this debt, all this credit card debt, student loans, or any type of consumer debt. And they're like, I'll just pull the home equity from my house, which means delaying it, paying it off sooner, and use that money to pay off my debt. In theory, that would sound like a good thing, but the fact of the matter is that people don't change the habits that got them into that debt. And within about four to six years, they're back into that same amount of debt, and they, they set back paying off their house a couple of years. So that's why it's so important for us to, you know, not touch our home equity if we don't have to. I know there's special circumstances, but not touch it to pay off debt, not touch it to invest. But it's just most importantly for us to have that mindset to be able to pay it off. You know, maybe if you get, if you have a business, they're like, okay, I'm going to get this client and all the profits from this client is going to go to pay off the house. Or when I get this bonus, this bonus is going to go to pay off the house. Or when I get that raise, I'm not going to increase my lifestyle. It's going to go to pay off the house. It's being very diligent and focused and having that mindset. That's the only way we're going to pay off the house sooner. And the same thing applies don't take equity to find the BBD, bigger, better deal. Oh, I can find a bigger, better deal. I can invest here. Let's go take the money out of the house and go do this. Again, we're taking unnecessary risk. Pay off the house and then have that extra money and use that wisely. Mm -hmm. Last thing here is to look for ways to save. Israel loves soup. Okay, maybe he doesn't. But he does do a lot of soup. You know, I eat soup to save money, but not because I love soup. <laughs> so 
So whether it's coupons or maybe, you know, staying with that one car instead of getting the second car, you know, that's what Israel, it's hard for me because I don't have the car, Israel has a car. And it's, it's a real challenge, but it's so easy to go get a second car because a lot of times, yes, we live in this city and it's so big, but it's one of those things that once again is taken away from us paying off the house well, early. If you look at these three areas, food, furniture, and vehicles. Those three things are things that we spend a lot of money on. And if you can use coupons to save on food, if you can buy in the estate sales and garage sales to save money to buy and sell things. I mean, I went in there on an estate sale one time and I saw this beautiful desk and I was like, I want to buy that. And it was like $400 and normally it'd been like $1,500 and I almost bought it. But the only reason I didn't buy it is because I didn't have any room. That, that makes a difference. So don't buy things you don't need. All them little beady eyes were like, ooh, I was just focused on it. But instead, I bought a, a nice table, like an in big, I don't know what you call that table. It's in our house now. And we use that. And that was a, a nice $400 table, solid wood that I think I got for like $50. And it be, it's because in the estate sales, they're trying to liquidate things. And you, you go there in the morning, you check it, and then you come back in the afternoon, and the guy's like wanting to give it away. Because they have to get, they have to liquidate it. And you can save a lot of money on furniture. Furniture is the thing that we spend a lot of money because there's a lot, a lot of markup. Now, I'll save you money. Yeah, he's going to make money while he's saving you money too. <laughs> and so you, those are things to think about. The last thing is a used car. You can make it last longer or use, you know, have one car instead of two. You can save a lot of money. That money can be put into what? Paying off the house. Paying off the house. So having that payoff mindset, always focus that I need to save money, I need to find new ways so that I can pay off this home sooner. Real key. Payoff strategy. What are we going to do, Israel? The payoff strategy, we want to talk about this in, in a sense. You have to, there's a few different strategies you can do to pay off your home sooner. You can find a lower interest rates. So right now, are, are interest rates going up or down? Interest rates are going up. So if you bought your home maybe five or six years ago, you might have get, got your house at 3%. And today, you might be lucky to get 5% if you have a pretty decent score. Uh, and so then interest rates are going up. So right now would not really be a good time to refinance. But if you buy your house now, let's say you buy it at 5 or 5.5%, 5 .5%, and interest rates go back down to 3% or 2 and a half if it gets really bad, that's a time when you would look to refinancing. And there's also things that you have to evaluate the associated fees. They have points, a point, like one point, two points. That's 1% of the loan amount. So if your loan is 100000 they say, well, it's going to be, uh, you're going to reduce it from 5.5% to 3% uh, and one point. That means you're going to pay that one percentage point. And you have to understand that and take those fees into account because $100,000, that's an extra thousand dollars you're paying. And all those need to be carefully evaluated. Review that with a financial coach or review that with someone who knows about mortgages and understand the cost so that you, you don't go finance right now. I need to refinance, not when the interest rates are going up. So just evaluate that option, that payoff strategy of refinancing. And that's one of the things that we need to know. What is our mortgage? Uh, you know, do we have, what type of mortgage do we have? When is it going to be paid off? And it's one of those things that you can just call your mortgage company and you can just ask them all these questions because they, they need to answer them. And a lot of times you can just say, hey, send that to me in writing so I can have that for my history. But when you're refinancing, you have to be able to recoup that expense within the first 18 months or the first 24 months because if not, then you just set yourself back. And that's the whole point. The whole thing that we're trying to stay focused when we're paying off the mortgage is it's going to, you know, help me, you know, catapult me to paying it off sooner or is it going to set me back? Yeah, and makes, uh, also credit score is important there. If your credit score when you bought your home was really bad, I've seen people with 9% mortgages. 9%, that's really bad. So if you have a 9% and you've improved your credit score and you were like at 450 or 500, and now you're at 750 or 800, then maybe that's the time you look into refinancing. Now, the second option here is making extra principal payments, either monthly or a one-time, an extra payment per year. And I have a, a website here that I've mentioned it to you before, and you can go to FNQ, 
calculator.com. So F like in financial, N like in numbers, financial numbers calculator. It's called fncalculator.com, and there's a lot of calculators here. But one, it says loan calculator, and when you look at the loan calculator, it, you can enter an amount, 150000 But I like what you have right there. And one of the things that, take into consideration, I'm not sure if you're able to see that number. What is the total interest on that house? 5% well, there. No, and uh, the total interest is $49,000. So the, the loan amount is 150000 The interest rate is 5%. The term is what? 15 years. That's on 15 years. And let's, let's put zero right now. Like there's no extra payment. And it shows that your monthly payment is what? 1186 Now, I'm not putting property tax in here. I'm not putting insurance, and I'm not putting PMI. PMI would only apply if you're, uh, you're having a loan that's you're paying, putting less than 20% down. And that just all depends on your particular situation. But once again, now look at the total interest. What are we looking at right there? Total interest is 63000 paid. Can you use that in your retirement? Yes. yes. So that's what is happening with we're not paying off our house. So if you put an extra monthly payment of just $100, $100 per month, and you have to tell them, apply to the principal. Apply to the principal. And when you calculate that, it shows, where to go? Interest saved of $7,687. $100 saved you $7,700. I hope you like your cable. I mean, actually, if I want to put cable, I've seen some cable bills. I kid you not. Maybe I'm not. Don't How let me step on. How much cable bills? Cable bills. How $250 much are they? when $200? you get all the channels. $200? That cable just costs you $16,200. If you get rid of the cable, you saved yourself 42 months of payments. I mean, I, I, I'm not, that's something to look at. The numbers tell you what that extra principal payment is. And maybe, maybe you've cut everything you can cut. Yes. And you have to start thinking about what can I increase? How can I increase my income? to make these payments. And that's why I said, you know, if you have a business, you can say, okay, the profits and the sales of this client is going to go to pay off the house. Or at your job, if you get a bonus, the bonus that I receive is going to go to pay off the house. Or if you get a raise, I'm not going to increase my lifestyle or my living. I'm going to use that increase to pay off the house. Because that's ultimately what you're saving. You're saving, you know, anywhere from 49000 to 63000 And typically a good Good rule of number, and let's say you have a $150,000 house, and that $150,000 house, at let's say 5%, let's just say average 5%, if you do a 30-year mortgage, guess how much the interest is? It's about $150,000. So you just pay for that house twice. Is it worth twice? Exactly. So that's why we want to pay off the house. We want to have the mindset, the strategy. And one of the things that you can go to this website, it's called homeownership.org. It's www.homeownership.org. And that's an organization that tells you about the government programs. There's government programs out there that can help you refinance or make calculations and figure out if you qualify for any government programs to help you uh, reduce your uh, your interest and the shortened amount of period and time it takes to pay your home off. So that's uh, homeownership.org. Now we're going to go on to the budget, having the payoff budget, what we need to do. The payoff budget. Well, now that we have the mindset, that we have the strategy, there are certain things that we need to be able to pay it off. Like I mentioned, in our retirement property, it, you know, 30-year mortgage for our retirement property, that would have been normal. 15 years, that would have been good. Seven years, radical Christian. Yeah, I believe the Bible. But guess what? Like I said earlier, four years. God wants to do it in three and a half years. So I'm believing God that he can do it like that. But as we have that budget, we know that the extra money that's coming in is going strictly to paying it off. And it's so important for us to know exactly how much money are we going to set aside in our budget to pay it off. A lot of times we have the desire, but until we sit down and actually look at the numbers, and that's when we know exactly what is the extra payments that we're going to be making. You know, one of the things that we're talking about having a, your home, and some people, they dream about having a home. 
There's people who live and they rent right now and they've had the rent and uh, we've had family members that they, they rent and it's what, four or five people in the household and they're in a one bedroom or a two bedroom. It's very tough. But at the same time, we have to think about the choices we make. When we look at our budget and we see that we're having two cars and each car is costing, we have the nicest 2018 or 2019 or, or a new car that's only one or two years old. And you look at that car and then there's another brand new one that's only three years old right next to it. You're robbing yourself from the opportunity to have your dream home. It's that one choice that we have to make. Had Or one of our uh, people that we know, if they would have just foregone having that second vehicle, you can put the money aside and you can figure out how much money does it take. Even if you buy a $100,000 house and you say, okay, I'm going to buy a two-bedroom, two-bath, $100,000 house, it would be better than having a two-bedroom apartment if you can, you can work it out, right? Because it will appreciate. And you have, to, you have to make sure you're making the right decision by looking at the numbers. I always tell people, evaluate the numbers. Think about that. But if you're spending $600 a month on your car, $200 a month on cable, and you're not needing to, what do you need more? You have to make that decision. Set the date when you want to pay off your house. Say, I'm going to buy this house for $140,000, $150,000. I'm going to set the date that I'm going to pay it off in eight years or seven years. And then I'm going to adjust my budgets. I'm going to go to those calculators like we're talking about and figure out how long and how much money extra I have to pay it off. If you get a 15-year note, chances are you're going to pay it off in 15 years or less. Then you have to think about it. I know you might say, well, 30 years what I can afford. No, because what happens in 30 years versus 15, there's an opportunity to lose your job. More, more chance you lose your job in 30 years than you will in 15. Is that correct? So we have to think about those things and, and we'll be real diligent. Make those choices that are challenging and sacrifices. Make the cuts in your expenses. Increase income. Now, one of the things that we're, we're trying to do is always trying to increase our income. A lot of times, you know, with the payoff budget, we just don't consider that we need to pay off this house. We think it's our house. We've been in it 20 years, 15 years. How many years you've been in there? And uh, one of the saddest coaching sessions that I ever had was a elderly couple. They were in their early 60s, and they had just lost their house. Because one of the family members became sick, they were overwhelmed with that, they were grieving, they were grieving of the, the loss of the loved one, and everything that happened, and they were asking me, Monica, is there anything we can do? It was too late. It was too late. But if they would have paid it off early, if they would have had that mindset, that strategy, that budget, then when that, you know, situation came across, then they wouldn't have had to worry about their house. It's so easy for us to, when we get overwhelmed with the loss of a loved one or someone's sick or we are sick, to, you know, to forget about the bills, to forget about this, to forget about that. But they, they, the banks don't. The banks don't. And, and things happen. Israel was, um, our banks, uh, it's a smaller bank where we have our, one of our mortgages and it was sold to another bank and then it was sold to another bank and we thought, oh, okay, you know, nothing has really changed. We're still sending our payments, but they weren't getting our payment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, three months and we would all the, almost they were about to pay it off and it would have been gone because of some errors that, you know, happened with the well, paycheck when, when banks, and the routing. When, when you change and, banks, sometimes they change routing numbers. Yes. And you, if you have direct deposit with your employer, you've got to make sure to update those routing numbers because we didn't realize that that bank wasn't getting their payment. And you have to be aware. And, and that, that takes us to this next point that's called staying the course. Financial maintenance is what we recall that, is make sure you're keeping your taxes up to date. Make sure you're keeping the proper insurances. Now, we all know in Houston that flood insurance is important. Now it is. <laughs> we never realized that you may not live near a flood zone, but you might live near a reservoir that can overflow. And those are the things that really hurt us. And we have to make sure that if you're going to invest in a home, you need to protect your home. Having the right insurances, fire, lightning, acts of mother nature happen. And so we have to do those things. When I say keep the taxes current, it's very important. I remember a story when... Uh, Monica and I were 
uh, looking to buy a property. This is before we bought a retirement property. We're, we saved money and we're like, okay, I heard about the county auctions where you can buy property there. But you have to buy it cash. So it's, there's no mortgage payments. Yeah, you have, you to, have buy to buy it cash. So we went there, but I didn't know. I thought you could like come up with the cash like the next day or two days later. So we get there and we already had this one property we were looking at. Perfect. We were looking at it. I think the minimum bid was like 12000 and so we took a little more. I think we went with 20000 thinking, yeah, we're going to have enough. And, of course, I got there, and they said, no, you have to have the cash in hand or have a cashier's check. And so I literally went running. We're downtown. I went running to find a bank. And I'm like, okay, you bid on it, and I'll go run and get the cash. And so she stayed there, and she had the little card where you have to lift up. And, and I remember getting to the bank, and I called her, and I'm, like, and I'm sweating profusely. I think it's in the summer. Yes. And I'm like, how's it going? We're about to bid. I'm going to bid. Okay, I'll talk to you later. And then when I get back, I'm like, what did it sell at? She sold. It sold at $31,000. i am like, you didn't, you didn't bid $31,000, did you? She goes, no, I stopped at thirty. I stopped at thirty. <laughs> we have the extra $10,000. We did it. So it was, it was, yeah, I, I was, guess, a good thing. We I think that, that, was a, that was a prayer. But that other guy had to pay $31,000 when he could have gotten it at twenty one. I probably. At twelve, He could have gotten it at twelve. If no, I we stopped been at there. 20. Yeah. So we pro- yeah. And it was only her and another person. Yeah, so I, you just get so excited at those auctions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a business. That was a business. And when he was paying, I kind of looked over. He was paying. He had like a, like pick a, pick a cashier's check. He had a whole bunch of them in, in increments of 10000 And so he bought that property for 31000 They turned around like, I think three months later, and put a for sale sign for 100000 So when you have cash, you can do those things. Uh, it, it, but it takes saving. But it, you know, it was good for us as the investor side. It was bad for the house because that person didn't have to lose their house if they would have just kept up with the taxes or the HOA or the mortgage payment, whatever it needs to be for us to keep our houses. In this case, it wasn't a house. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of houses and if you can, someone's other misfortune, unfortunately, can be something that benefits you. Again, but don't, we don't want you to be someone who's losing your house to a county auction. So you have to make sure you're aware. There's sometimes when you purchase your house, you can have it in escrow, or you can choose not to have it in escrow. But you have to be responsible for paying those taxes. And you have to save that money every month because they're due January 31st. And if you don't pay them automatic penalties. I think it's like 5% right away. And the next month, it's quite a bit. So that's really important is having the right financial maintenance. And the second point there is home maintenance. Home maintenance. I mean, it's one of those things that we, you know, we need to set money aside every month, even though if you have a brand new house, you still need to be setting money aside because things happen. You know, we've had a lightning strike at our house and it has fried the AC in three places and different stuff like that. And it's a brand new home. But that's why it's so important that, you know, throughout the whole life, time of the house to have that home maintenance fund set aside so the home maintenance fund now don't let little things become big things you know what i mean preach to yourself israel preach preach to to myself like even on the car like the car had a little oil leak that i noticed and it was in the garage and i was like oh i need to take care of that and then it kept on every time i think about that i didn't even have the sense to check the oil so i was driving and a little light this says oil turned red and it was blinking. You don't have any more oil. <laughs> At that time, it's like too late most of the time. So I happened to be near the mechanic and drove to the mechanic, didn't go to work. It's like, I'm going there. And he goes, yeah, you were out of oil. Okay, that was not a good thing. Now, I could have made a little thing like that into a very big thing. I could have burned out the engine. Luckily, I didn't burn out the engine. There was a bad solenoid in there that was leaking oil. And that's why my garage looks like a big brown mess. And I should have not ignored that. I know what I should do. We all know that those little things, the little what, the little foxes spoil the, the, vine. the vine. Those small things that we have to be aware of. We have to be focused and we need to be aware of our finances and our home maintenance. Mm-hmm. Keep the little things from becoming big things. So, yes. So this series, we get to wrap it up. 
I hope you have enjoyed it. You know, the main thing is to, if you did not get the handout, we did have this handout out in the front. And, you know, just make sure to be able to just make that right decision. What is that right decision for you? Number one error first time home buyers is they buy too much house. Exactly. So, number one error of people who are retired, they keep a house they cannot afford. So, and, and when you do everything, all these steps here, I believe that you will be able to have your dream home. And, and we were looking at having the decision, making the purchase, and now paying it off. If you do these things, and we keep God focused and centered in that, we know that God's going to do the things that we can't. When we're looking for that more income and that better job, we, we just keep a good attitude and keep believing that God's going to provide the opportunity. And if we do that and stay focused on it and follow the lessons we've learned, you're going to have a dream home and pay it off. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.